packing up an order and a couple of people have asked me how I got all that into a flat rate envelope. So I thought I would uh, just hop on here for a minute and record a little video about how I do the flat rate envelopes to get this much stuff in it. I'm going to pause you for a minute though because I forgot the extra goodies for this. So give me just a second. Okay, so that took a little longer than expected, but here we go. We got my goodies together for the extras. Let me slide these in here. Uh, so this is, uh, let's see what I'm going to fit in the envelope here. That's 150, 75, and 30, and then maybe there's 10 sheets of stuff here. So I've got a 200, 250, 260. So this is like 265 pieces of stuff. It's not whole sheets of paper, but I will get all of this into that envelope. Uh, so this is how it is now, and I couldn't get all that in there if I tried, um, simply because uh, it would mess up the papers. So, and other people may have done this, uh, but several people have asked me, and it's actually not that hard, so, and strictly speaking, you don't need the scoreboard, but I do use it, because I have it. So, I just run the bone folder down and open it up. So, and then, um... I've gotten pretty good at guessing, but what I used to do, I don't have enough space next to me, is I used to kind of just put this in here like this and figure out about how far I needed to fold it. Um, I got to be honest, even with the thickest bunches of papers, um, I usually only need to score it at like the three quarter inch mark and you could just fold this I just like using the scoreboard because it makes a nice a nice fold so I'm just gonna jiffy right on through this um, I'm gonna go because of the index cards in there I'm gonna go at about an inch I think So there, now it's scored. It just makes it a little bit easier to fold because it's a little bit thicker of a, a cardboard. And I don't fold on this side because it's the short side anyway. So if I'm taking up length, I will, what's happening now is I'll fold it. And now it's kind of like a little box, but it's still the envelope. I've never had anybody at the post office, and I even asked my personal mail person because she is amazing. We have the best mail lady ever. And she's been my mail lady for my last three apartments. And I'm going to be sad when we have to move out of this neighborhood because she is just the best, most conscientious, friendly mail person we have ever had. And I'm not saying all the other ones we had were, you know, stupid heads, but um, she just we ordered something once um, when we first moved into this apartment that was about five years ago and it was lost in the mail but what had happened was it had been misdelivered by her the person who subs for her on her days off to an apartment just down the road from us but the guy was on vacation and so it was just sitting in his mailbox and it sat there for I want to say about two months. Um, and then one day she showed up on my door, on my porch, and not on my door. Yes, she just hangs out on my door. Um, <laughs> but she showed up on my doorstep, and she had the package. And it was something that my son wanted that we ordered off of eBay, and it was probably a $60 item. And we had gotten it replaced and everything. But she had remembered us asking about the package and being concerned because it was the only thing to that point um, and she's been our mail lady for about 10 years 
that had ever been quote unquote lost in the mail. We've never had anything, uh, knock on this fake wood here, um, we've never had anything stolen, uh, never anything permanently lost. Um, but she had remembered us asking about it and she knew it was for my son and she brought the package and, and explained everything and apologized and I was like so floored by that. That's just an amazing, that she remembered it first of all. That she didn't just, you know, write on it, return to sender, misdelivered. After all that time that she actually dropped it off to us. I thought that was just amazing. So she is amazing. But I asked her and she said as long as I'm not adding anything to make this longer or bigger, it doesn't matter what I do to it as long as everything fits inside the original amount of cardboard. So, so that's kind of what you got there. So now it, if I put it on its end, maybe you'll be able to tell better. Now it kind of looks like a little boxy thing and it'll hold the papers better and you can fit a lot more into it. Now I use this for anything over a pound because this is the most economical value, the way that shipping works for, so, and I just hold it firmly on the base and I push everything as far back as it goes and I pull this as far forward as it will go. And I do try to center what's inside there in the middle because this is gonna get folded up like when you wrap a package is basically what's happening here. Um, and sometimes I can't use the sticky part. I leave that strip that I just tore off on it because I don't want it to stick to anything. And this one's edging on pretty close to not being able to. Hold on. Okay, so, um, so there's, and I do tape over that, but it's easier if I can start with it stuck down right there. So now here's what I've got. There's the, um, and it's better if all the paper's flat. It's a little bit more difficult when there are index cards and other poofy things in there, but you can actually get quite a lot in here. So then what I'll do is I'll take a piece of tape now. I'm going to put it on the side of my desk. So um, I don't know how to show you this. So I'll cut, careful not to cut the papers, but just cut just like you have if you had wrapping paper. I cut this part off and I, it just makes it easier to tape it if it's tapered like that. And then I'll do the same thing over here. And this side is usually more difficult just because of that stupid pull tab that they've got on there. So, there's all go my little recycle. So then I just fold this part, I make, a, I, I make sort of a crease, I guess, like as much as I can, what's going on right here. And this one's gonna be difficult because there's a lumpy thing in there. Okay, so I take that piece of tape I had, and this is just how I started out. So I can get it nice and tight and snug. I just, it's just on the back of the thing. I make sure it's down real good because I pulled one once and it came off, but I was pulling on it really hard and I punched myself right in the mouth really hard and it did not feel good. So this is the challenging part because I want to keep everything tucked up inside there. Get in there. And then I pull it as tight as I can, and I basically that's like placeholdering that for me. Now look, I've got a little. I'll just take a little piece of. This is the only corner that I ever have trouble with. Is the one by the, and I don't think I'll have it on the other side because it's closer to this end. But um, sometimes. That little corner right there doesn't close all the way. And the post person's never said anything, and I've never had a package returned or had um, any extra postage slapped on one of these because everything is well under. I think the weight is something like 70 pounds. So here's the one that I was going to show you. doesn't quite work the way I want it to. 
It's not just a smooth one, no. You, well, I guess it's better if you see all the things that could possibly go wrong right there. That way, just so that nothing, if it's, you know, don't want dirt or for that to catch on something and rip open. Um, so there's, the, it's at least tacked down right there. And then come over here. Hopefully I'm getting this on camera for you. Okay, so now, uh, phooey. This one has to go a little bit less than, still a little too much, the width of the box because it's got to stay I don't like it to wrap here because I'm going to come across this way with some tape as well. So um, that will get reinforced all on its own. But I want to reinforce this. And where this fold is here, I like the, it feels weak to me when there's not tape on it. So it's just another point where I want to make sure I've reinforced it so that the package does not get damaged. So you can see, gosh, I, I think maybe I've been showing you this whole thing off. Hopefully, this will be okay. <laughs> um, so now I'm going to cut on this side. I don't know if I can. I'm trying. Just make sure when you, you know, look where you're cutting. I cut the little flappy part off just to make it easier. Cut those off. Just like if you were doing wrapping paper. And then we'll fold that down right there and cut off the cut off just like that. Just it's just easier. I guess I could try and do this one standing up for you. You'll watch me struggle with all the cardboard. Alright, so I need a little piece of tape. that like right in the middle right there and make sure it's secured down pretty good so I don't punch myself in the face because uh, let me tell you that is no fun and nobody's really sympathetic when you punch yourself in the face just look at you like you're extra special and not in a nice way all right so and that's why you want to make sure everything's all tucked under because look at how nice and snug that's going up. So much smoother than the other side. <laughs> One side, I will be honest with you, is always more difficult than the other side. So there's that. And then we will kind of measure our tape off. I still like to kind of snug it up and make sure I'm getting that as nice and tight as possible. And then, and I'm sorry about that. I know that's a horrible, horrible noise. I do this in the middle of the night a lot. And maybe I'm a jerk for doing this, but sometimes when my neighbor's playing his music really loud, really I wait until he stops, but I know he's still in the living room, and then I rip off a big thing of tape, because that noise in the middle of the night is super loud, and he does not like it, and I don't care, because I don't like Madonna at four in the morning, so, and then I will do the same thing on the bottom, even though there's no flappy thing just to and someday so we'll do this side first I didn't rip off enough tape just to reinforce that corner a little bit more I have paranoia I know Natasha's gotten my pack because just before she's like I can't get in it I can't get in it and I'm like I'm sorry but I'm not sorry because your stuff got there and it was undamaged. All right. So, 
I don't think I have one over here, so let me grab one more quick. I'm going to put the camera up a little bit higher and now. I'm sorry if I did part of that off camera. I'm trying the camera in a different location because when I take pictures, it seems really high up. But when I turn the recording on, it like focuses way down on on here. And so all of a sudden, it's like right on top of that. Um, so I moved it higher up, but now I have to have the stuff farther back. It's just, I'm sorry. So we went from this flatty envelope to this beautiful fatty envelope. And I will tell you how much this package weighs. My record to date is two pounds, 13 ounces. And technically it doesn't matter if I weigh it or not. This one is two pounds, 10.2 ounces, which I will put into Etsy as two pounds, 11 ounces, because once it goes 0.1, it's the next ounce. And our post office does catch that shit, so, or that stuff. Um, you don't need to see me put the label on. The only other thing I ever do, and I put this on all my packages, and I need to clean my rubber stamp because it's not stamping as well. But I have some of that stamp cleaner stuff. Also, I need a new ink pad really bad. I've worn mine out. Um, I didn't take very good care of it, and I have, I edge things a lot, um, and I'm, the tool that you use, um, my pads are all dried out because it's, it's not humid here at all, which I think, you know, you all are always complaining about the humidity, but all of this kind of stuff, uh, if it's not sealed up, gets dry rot, so these, um, I've had mine for a while, and they're all wearing away, and I just haven't got the money at the moment. Not that they're super expensive, but I need to buy new packs of this thing. Uh, because all mine have, are, are basically, when I, when I, if you look, you could see it, there's all the stuff from it. That's, it's just dry rotting away, so when I do this, there's lots of schmutzy stuff because it's literally flaking away. So, this is my little mascot, because I'm a hag. Got to have my, see, it's, I need to clean the stamp. He's not coming out very well. Right now, he's a ghosty frog. What it is, it's an old stamp that I got from, I've had it for more than 20 years, and it did come from Michael's, but it's a little frog on a broomstick, and he just needs to be cleaned. Um, I haven't been wiping him off very well, so he's got quite a buildup of ink on him. It's just a frog on a, and closer to Halloween, I'll put, I have some little witch hat stickers. I'll put a little witch hat sticker on the broom with him, and that'll be me. Well, that'll be my frog having left me somewhere, taking my hat home. Uh, so, it's a, uh, thank you. Happy crafting. And my little frog, whether you want to believe it or not, I believe, helps my packages get where they're going. And this is, welcome back. This lady has ordered from me before. She's super nice. And I love my papers to go to people who Love my papers, I guess. But, and I put a little tape over that just because the stamped image sometimes will get blurry. Even though that stays on ink because of the slick nature of the packaging. So, that is how I do that. So, um, if you uh, ship flat items, or even with a little bumpy, I have gotten up to uh, about 325 pages in here. I haven't quite reached three pounds on a package, and I don't know if I could, um, but I've gotten really close. Um, 
And if you are reaching the point where this doesn't really come over, like it only comes barely on there, don't take that sticky strip off, leave it on, and just tape it closed. Because what will happen is the sticky strip will stick to whatever is inside. And I don't have any of those lovely plastic bags everyone uses. I really uh, do want to get some. Um, because then it, it wouldn't matter quite as much. But right now, if, I, if I'm not careful, that sticky strip in there would stick to the papers, which would ruin the papers on top. And nobody wants that. But that is my quickie, quickie video on how I make the flatty envelope into a fatty. And I hope that you are all having a wonderful day. If you watched my, oh my God, it took me 20 minutes to wrestle with that envelope. Envelope wrestling with the hag coming to you on Wednesday morning. This is Tuesday in mid-morning. I am low-key listening to the Jersey Crafter who has her lovely new crafting room. If you have not visited her channel, she is a wonderful YouTuber. Uh, she does glue and don't think, and I just do painty papers. Her channel is so positive and amazing. Um, you should check her out. I will put her link in the description. Um, she doesn't have a set time. Sometimes she does live. Well, I think she always does lives. I don't think I've ever seen just a video from her. Um, but she doesn't have a specific time. But if you can catch her on, her channel is such a welcoming and positive place. You should definitely give it a shot. I will see you all next time. If you have watched this video all the way through, well, you are just marvelous. And you are marvelous whether you watch this video all the way through or not. Let's face it. Um, have a wonderful day. I hope that whatever you are doing in your life, it brings you joy and fills you with happiness. Hug somebody today that you love because they probably need it. There are not enough hugs in this world. And I will see you all next time. Bye.